us all around the world. Thank you for staying tuned. You are watching us live, and this is coming to you from the City of Jesus International Ministry Studio. My name is Christopher Oji. By my fruit, by the nature of Jesus, by my character, by my attitude, I shall be known. Children of God are known by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of love, spirit of meekness, peace, self-control, humility, obedience, faithfulness, joy, hope, generosity, kindness, perseverance, patience, and the like. We are going to be led by the Spirit of God to witness what is going to happen in our midst any moment from now. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Stay connected. We are going to quickly turn our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 13. The book of John, chapter 13. Quickly turn your Bible to the book of John, chapter 13. Now, before the feast, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from the supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and gilded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? They didn't hear that. Then he came to Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Look at that kind of question. Jesus answered and said to him, What, am, what I am doing, what I am Doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash your if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Take note of this. Let us read it again from verses 8. Peter said to him, to who? Jesus Christ. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part. So Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet only, let us read it again from verses 9. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. After seeing the divine significance of what Jesus 
was about uh, to do to him, Peter allowed him to act. Think about this. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And my head. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, not all of you. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. So when, his, when he had washed their feet, taking his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? Verse 13. You call me teacher and Lord. Then your Lord also ought to wash one another's feet. We are getting closer to our teaching today. Love one another. Once again, you are getting closer to our teaching today titled Love One Another. Let us read again from verses 14. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor, nor he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Many people in the world today talk about love, know about love, and read about love. But not everyone in the world today is acting love and doing the works of love. Verse 17, I read again. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. For instance, love itself obeys God's commandments. If you have the love of God in your heart, you will be the doers of God's word. I'm referring to everyone in the world. If you have the word of God in you, you will be doers of the word of God. You as an individual, if you have the love of God in your heart, you will be a doer of the word of God. It is not all about knowing the Bible from the beginning to the end. It is not all about knowing things that will promote morality, peace, and unity. It is all about acting on them. Love itself must be practiced. Love is practical. The only genuine proof of your love for God is your total obedience to the words and spirit of God. Write it down and place it everywhere. The only genuine proof of your love 
of God is your genuine or total obedience to the word and spirit of God. If you love, your love will be practiced by you. Positive examples have great and positive impacts in this world of which you are called to be a part. If you see anything that is wrong, it is not all about knowing about what is wrong. It is not all about seeing the wrong thing that are done by your neighbors. It is all about acting against what is wrong. Jesus Christ lived by example. He preached love and he demonstrated love. His love was practiced by him. Love is patient. Love is humble. Love is kind. Love is truthful. Love never fails. Love cares for everyone and attends to everyone. Jesus Christ took his time out to attend to his disciples because of the love of God in his heart. If you find yourself not caring for your parents, not listening to your parents, especially when they're giving you godly advices, the love you have needs deliverance. If you find yourself not listening to your husband or to your wife, to your boss in the office, or to your colleagues, especially when they're telling you something that is godly, especially when they're giving you good advices, the love you have in your heart needs deliverance. There are fake love and there are true love. Which of these two do you have? The real love of God is only found in Jesus. Jesus Christ is the symbol of God's love. And Jesus Christ is the word of God. How is your relationship with the living word? How often do you study your Bible and put the words into practice? Love must be practiced. The only genuine proof of your love is your obedience to the word and spirit of God. Let us read on. Because of time, we are going to read again from Verses 34 to 35. The same chapter, John chapter 13. Let us read. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all we know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Did you hear the commandment of Jesus? Remember the title of today's teaching. Love one another. 
Love is not arrogant. Love is not disobedient. Love is not rude. Love is not stubborn. Love is ever cheerful and ever humble. Do you ever want to be loved? If the answer is yes, how many times have you given out your own love to God and to your neighbor? That which you plant, you will reap. No one plants hatred and expect to reap the fruit of love. No one plants evil suspicion and expects to reap the fruit of compassion. Love and care. Many do not love today because of the tradition they have. Many only select people to care for. Love is not lust. And lust is not love. Love is not sexual immorality. Go into the world today and you see that many have turned love into lust. And lust into love. The definition of love remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. No tradition in this world will change the ancient definition of love. Love is holiness. Love is purity. Love is self-control. Love is sincerity. Love tolerates everyone. Love dwells with everyone. Love accepts correction or corrections. What kind of love do you have? The love of God cannot be limited. The love of God attracts God's blessings. Love expresses itself in forgiveness. Not in bitterness, not in fear, not in worries, not in doubt, not in strife. Love does not only know God's word, but puts God's word into practice. Jesus Christ is the symbol of God's love. He came down from heaven and obeyed everywhere God. He has set a standard that must be followed by everyone in this world. Any society that does not follow the full step of love is doomed. Many are complaining today because of lack of family is supposed to be an umbrella of love, not an umbrella of confusion, hatred, rejection, strife, evil suspicion. How can a child begin to hate the parents? Love is not hatred, and hatred is not love. Hatred is Satan, and Satan is hatred. 
Anyone who has the spirit of hatred is possessed by Satan and thus needs deliverance. Love does not separate itself from others. Love works with all the spiritual forces of God. Love works with others in a society. How can parents begin to hate their own children? Where there is love, there is nothing like hatred. Love cares for everyone. Love overlooks the wrongs that are done. There is no one who has committed sins that the love of God in your heart cannot forgive and forget. Write it down and place it everywhere. There is no one who has sinned against you that the love of God in your heart cannot forgive and tolerate. If you truly love God, you will love yourself and love your fellow human being. Satan is the king of hatred and the ancient spirit of division and confusion. He came into the garden of Eden and separated the man and female, the man and the female that were created by God from God himself. What is the purpose of hatred in your heart? Is it not to cause separation, confusion, disunity? Is it not to detach you from those who are sent by God to help you? Those who are sent by God to help you could be your own child, could be your parents, could be your husband, could be your wife, your neighbors, or your co-business partners. Those whom God has sent to help you could be the leaders of your country. If you have the love of God in your heart, there will not be any room for evil, suspicion, hatred, division, separation, divorce, enmity, stubbornness, rudeness, arrogance, disobedience. Why do you have all this in your heart? Your heart is the dwelling place of love and not hatred. Your heart is created to be the dwelling place of God's love. Give God the chance. In other words, give love the chance. God is love and love is God. Anyone who abides in God abides in love. Anyone who abides in love abides in God. A life without God is a life of hardship, poverty, penury, suffering, sickness, disease, attacks, confusion, rebellion, separation, and the like. Adam and Eve were separated when hatred entered into them. When your life begins to disobey God, you are possessed by Satan. You don't need to say, I don't have evil spirit. When your life is already disobeying God and his living instructions. If you want to disobey, disobey Satan and his evil suggestions. Satan creeps into people's mind to poison their mind against their family members. Satan creeps into people's conscience to poison their conscience not to believe in the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Remember, as a human being, your life comes from God 
and not Satan. You did not create yourself. God created you to be a child. God created you so you can come into this world and be a child of love. Love is very important because love itself is the greatest spiritual quality that any human being can have. Love does not consider race, nationality, gender, age, status, family background, and the like. Love does not consider physical appearance. When God created man, he was not looking at the physical qualities. He was looking at spiritual qualities of which love is one. If you are physically able, whereas spiritually you are crippled, what a spiritual disability that is. If you are physically fit, but spiritually very weak and incapable to face the unseen enemies of life, what a great disaster and spiritual challenge that really is. It is better to be spiritually strong than to be otherwise. It is better to be spiritually powerful than to be otherwise. The best time to love is not when you get old or when you are in need of help. The best time to love and care for your fellow human beings is not when you need something. From them. It is also when. They need something from you. Love is given to be shared. Write it down. And place it everywhere. Love is given to you. To be shared. By you. With your fellow human beings. How have you been sharing your love? The measure at which you share your love is the measure at which you receive love from others. Love is a spiritual seed that must be planted in a fertile soil or ground. Every human being you meet today is a ground or soil where your love, I mean the seed of your love can be planted Allowed to germinate, watered, grow, and yield bountifully. Love cares for strangers, people that are not part of your family. God himself is love, and he is the God of strangers. He is the God of strangers. And foreigners. How do you treat foreigners where you are? If you maltreat them, do you not know that you too are a foreigner in this physical world? All of us came from the unseen world where God lives through his word and by his spirit. And one day all of us will leave this physical world to meet God. They show that all of us in this physical world, irrespective of where you have found yourself and where you call your own nation, are strangers. If, stra if strangers are now oppressing other strangers, where will they be free? If a stranger finds another stranger, and begins to oppress that very stranger, when will their freedom come? 
we must be released one day from the imprisonment of this physical world into the enjoyment of another world, the world of glory, where God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit live. The love you give, the care you give, not just to yourself, but also to your siblings or sibling, to your parents or parents, to your children or child, to your husband or wife, to your in-laws, to your neighbors, and everyone in the world. is capable of reproducing. What you plant, that you will reap. Many have planted hatred. As I said, hatred is Satan, and Satan is hatred. Many have planted hatred, and today they are going through generational curses. If your family continues life in this man manner, if your family continues life in this manner, what will become of the incoming generation? What kind of generation do you expect to have in the nearest future? That is why we must plant the gracious seed of love. Jesus Christ, God's most powerful seed of love, was planted in the earth to produce a family. Today, multitudes, millions and billions, are born again through God's most powerful seed of love, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. What seed are you planting? Judas Iscariot planted deceit. What seed are you planting? Let us take a look at people that planted good seed of love. Find your time to read the book of Acts, chapter 10. Find your time also to learn more about the lifestyle of David. He was in a position also to revenge because he was being seen as the enemy of the first king of Israel. But he never did. He said to himself, I will never be allowed to be used. I will never allow myself to be used by Satan to shed innocent blood. Love does not kill. Love does not steal. And love does not destroy. Your life needs to be lived in love. Write it down. Your life needs to be lived in love. Don't ever accommodate hatred, bitterness, offense, anxiety, strife, evil suspicion, anger, stubbornness, rebellion, sexual immorality, lust, fornication, masturbation, Envy, jealousy, and the like in your life. As I said, your life is a product of love and must be lived in love. Your life is a product of love and must be lived in love. Love is holiness. Anytime you are keeping your purity, you are living a life of love. 
Anytime you are highly disciplined and self-controlled, very, very respectful and obedient, not just to God, but also to your parents and your fellow human beings, you are living in love. Your life is not given to you so you can stop living it in love. No, and not at all. Don't allow the power of lust, the power of Satan, to destroy the grace of love in your heart. Right from the beginning of your life, you are made to be a child of love. As I said, love does not kill. Love does not separate itself from other people. Love reaches out to everybody, cares for everybody, respects everybody, and helps everybody. If you have great love, you will have a great destiny. If Satan wants to destroy your destiny, he will first and foremost destroy the love of God in your heart. Look at the way the heart of Judas Iscariot was hardened because the love of God in his heart was totally destroyed by Satan. Have you ever said to yourself, I will never have anything to do with anybody. Either your parents, brothers, sisters, siblings, or good advices that are coming from people. If the answer is yes, it is not too late for you to receive deliverance, even as you are listening to this message. You are a child of love. Love everybody. Jesus Christ said, this is the new commandment that I'm giving you today that you love one another. Love starts at home. Why are you finding it difficult to love yourself? Your heart is the home or the place where God dwells through his word and by his spirit. If God is love, love starts at home. You cannot say within you, if truly you are a child of God, that you are not loved and cared for. Why should you make that comment? Why should you believe that? Why are you depressed? Why? You are constantly loved by God. If there is anyone who is loved on earth, it should be you and not anyone else. Now, if you feel the presence of love in your heart, you should also allow the same love to be felt by people around you. If your life is dominated by the spirit of love, you will promote love, not just in your family, but anywhere you find yourself. Love allows children to obey their parents. Love allows wives to be submissive to their own husbands. Love allows husbands to care for their own wife and love them, even as Christ has loved the church. Love allows citizens of various nations to support their leaders, speak well of them, and help them to build their various nations. Love allows the leaders of various nations to care for the citizens and revive the economy and situations of the country for good. A nation 
that lack love, lack God. Where there is love, there is development. There is joy, there is peace. There is, there is cooperation and mutual understanding. Let us allow love to drive our lives. Let us learn to love one another for God's sake. Love helps people without expecting anything in return because love is love. If you have love, your life will lack nothing and want nothing. With the love of God in your life, every other person that is absent in your life does not matter. You with God, whose name is love, are the spiritual majority. Love has never been defeated. Love will never be defeated. Your life cannot be conquered if your life is driven by love. Do you ever want to always remain victorious in your career, in your daily encounters with the challenges of life? If the answer is yes, Please, learn to love one another. I believe that this brief message from God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit has drawn your life closer to God. The everlasting love of life. Remain in the presence of love even as you allow your soul, spirit, and body to put the word of God into practice. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the lives of your children. Give them the grace to have the grace and spirit of love in their hearts. Let the seed of hatred be permanently destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let there be understanding, cooperation, obedience, tolerance, forgiveness. Let them live together, dwell together, work together, and do things together for your glorious name both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. And amen.